Hi, Billy Trimbo here with Cisco Tech. In this video, I will demonstrate how to prepare for and perform an upgrade to your Cisco IMA Presence server. A few notes before we begin. Please refer to the Upgrade Planning section of the Upgrade and Migration Guide for your specific version as each version may have certain requirements. As I am in presence as part of the Communications Manager cluster, the CUCM publisher must be upgraded first. The matching version of CUCM will be required for compatibility. All current releases must match both major and minor version numbers across the cluster. Let's take a closer look at these points. The Upgrade Methods section of the Upgrade and Migration Guide explains the types of upgrades possible and how they differ. The version that you are upgrading to and from are also important, which can be found in the Supported Upgrade and Migration Paths section, and this will determine what upgrade method you can perform. For the purpose of this video, I will be performing a direct standard upgrade, which are the most common and simplest methods. This means that I will be able to perform the upgrade in the background to another partition while my current version is still active. And once it is completed, I can perform the command to switch to the new version. Once we know the upgrade method we're using, we should check for any other specific notes that pertain to our version and, very important, to check for any COP files that would be required for this upgrade. For example, in my environment, I have presence currently on version 12.5.1-11900-114, also known as SU1. I'm going to upgrade to the current latest update, which is SU6. If I check the COP files section, it looks like there are no COP file requirements for this update. However, there may be some COP files needed that are not directly related to the version update. Upon checking the Utility Files section of the Downloads page, I see that I will need a COP file to allow my environment to work with the SHA-512 signed files. This will need to be installed first before I can work with the other COP files that are signed with SHA-512, which includes the SU6 update file. The last choice I need to make is how I will perform my upgrade. Upgrades can be executed from either the Cisco Unified I'm in Presence OS Administration page or from a command line interface. Both will accomplish the same task. We will choose the OS Administration page option. Now before I begin the installation, the pre-upgrade task section of the guide is recommended. You will see that there are many steps to help prepare for the upgrade. Let's focus on the Upgrade Readiness COP file. This is obtainable from the Cisco download area for presence. And you can see that there is also a post upgrade COP file. This is optional for after your upgrade. The pre upgrade test is here and it will be for both the CUCM and presence servers. There is one more COP file that we may need, which is called the Cisco Free Common Space COP file. First, I want to check the status of the IAM and presence publisher from CLI. From the command show status, I can see the basic system information for the server. We should take note of how many days the server has been running because it may be a good idea to schedule a cluster reboot before the update is performed. Also note the amount of use space that is available because many servers will show the disk partitions at almost 100% capacity which may cause an installation attempt to fail. That's where the Cisco free common space COP file will be needed, and it's also available from the Communications Manager Utility Downloads page. Notice this COP file shows to be SHA-512 signed also, which means I will first need to install the SHA-512 COP file mentioned earlier before I can use the free common space COP file. Now that we have what we need to start the upgrade, we are ready to follow the pre-upgrade task list. For optimal performance and to minimize any issues, it's recommended to step through every part of the task list, but for the purpose of this video, here's a high-level overview of this process. Finally, let's begin this update installation from the Cisco Unified OS Administration page under the Software Upgrades menu and the Install Upgrade option. I have my ISO files located on an SFTP server, so I'm simply connecting to the server to access these files. Here are the ISO files that Communications Manager found from the SFTP server and I'm starting with the pre-upgrade check ISO. 
The installation downloads and runs the comp file and we can see the progress as the various checks are performed. After a few minutes we see that this has completed and we can scroll through the installation log or view it from CLI with the file view command. This same ISO file can be run for all other nodes in the Communications Manager cluster, including presence. With that complete, we can create a DRS backup and disable high availability from the Presence Redundancy Group page. Now we can issue a reboot for the servers. Once they have restarted, the Cisco Sync Agent service on Presence can be stopped as the installation is about to begin. At this point, the update process will look the same for all nodes, but the Communications Manager Publisher must be updated first. However, the version should not be switched until the present servers have completed the same installations. I have just updated the Communications Manager, so I'll start with the Cisco Free Common Space COP file on the Presence Publisher. As you can see, this is a quick process that cleans up disk space and prepares for the install. Now that it shows to be completed, we can finally execute the installation using the version update file. This process will take the longest amount of time, but nothing more needs to be done and you will see notification that the installation completed. However, if it fails, for some reason the full log details can be reviewed and copied. For any present subscribers, the update installation steps can be performed just as they were before. When all servers in the cluster have been updated, the only step needed is one command to switch the version to the new 12.5.1 SU6 partition. The Communications Manager Publisher should be first, and once we can confirm a successful CLI login has been established, the Presence Cluster node versions can be switched also. Eventually, we should see all nodes in the cluster with the new version. High availability can be enabled once all present services have been started, DB replication is in a good state, and the post installation cop check can be run to confirm everything is working. It is possible that a second reboot may be needed to clear up any residual database updates depending on how much the update versions varied. I hope this video was helpful, and thank you for watching.